initially it was because uh, I wanted to talk about like uh, tribes and cities and things like that, but I don't want to pound you guys with this kind of thing um, two days in a row because I have something special for tomorrow. Um, RP Gamer, hello. Uh, I really want to talk about something classic um, about uh, taverns and why do we still need to use them. But there's a new release from, oh, shoot, sorry about that. Uh, there's a new release from Critical Hit. Oh, well, we actually have a couple things, but the biggest one is our latest book came out, um, Plains and Grasslands. And I was like, nah, I don't want to really talk about that two days in a row because tomorrow uh, that's going to be the whole subject. We're just going to talk about um, how to make like one of the most boring uh, environments in in um, RPG history uh, exciting. And uh, that's, it's, it's what, a 66 page book um, about nothing but just plains and grasslands and um, what we consider to be just a flat expanse. All right, so let's get into today. Um, even though it hasn't updated yet, it says tribalism and civilization. I actually changed it. Uh, I put down taverns, why? Uh, why do we need them? Uh, do we still need them? Um, are there alternatives to it? it? It seems kind of a simple thing, but Really, if we just deep dive into it, uh, I think that the classic tavern is still needed, or at least what it represents in the RPG community. All right, so um, I can't remember where I heard this from. I want to say it was from Sly Flourish, um, or at least a conversation was kind of in. Um, the tavern represents a microcosm of your setting because a lot of times we will we world builders really we, we get so invested in what we've created um we want to try to express that to everybody that we come across so we want our players you're like man i've got this great idea about these um dragon overlords and the un, you know undead hordes in the south and um this shadowy arcane uh, cult and, you know, you go on and on and on and we get this great idea. The players sit down. They have no idea what we're talking about, right? They, they, they haven't, they haven't had the creative process. They sit down at the table, you give them their uh, rules and regulations on the kind of characters they create. They sit down and, oh, okay. And then here comes the info dump, right? Because we want to tell them everything. Um, in the north and then to the east and in the mountains and then underground and other worlds and how magic works and everything. And at some point, you know, you're like one by one, the player's eyes start glazing over and they they start wondering like, OK, where do I fit in? Or I, I really don't remember the, the last five paragraphs of what you just told me. You know what I mean? And then there's the idea of like, do I create a wiki? Do I print off the information? Do I make a booklet and have them have to have to read it? Do I, you know, make different chapters and hand out each chapter to each person? But there's actually a simpler way of doing it. And that is because the tavern, the tavern represents a, um, it's like a summary. It's like a pinpoint. It's the, it is an area in your world that is a touchstone for all the other things going on. It is a, um, it is the place that is the summary of all the things that represent what your your setting and the theme and everything is about. So the tavern just isn't a place for um, for people to get drunk and and mess with the girls and burn the place down and have a fight or what have you. It is a way for you to use all of the senses to express to your, your players what your world is about. So overhearing conversations, um, merchandise on the walls, the attitude of the people in the taverns, um, whether they are nervous or happy or um, 
or anything are really great tools to use. Um, RP Gamer says, um, I use taverns for that reason. It immediately introduces the different cultures and how they interact. Also, as a major meeting spot, it is where news gets shared. A absolutely. Um, Live and Let Dice says, taverns are my favorite GM adventure hook shell game. And right, so the tavern, it's not even, it's not even that, um, that the, the specific tavern is important, but it allows you to impart information to your players and then get those adventure hooks where the players may overhear a conversation or um, maybe in this local community, they use the tavern as a uh, um, communal meeting place. So there might be, you know, um, families in the background or the tables are all moved away so they can, someone can stand up on a chair and speak to everyone. Uh, maybe there are paintings in the wall or tapestries or old weapons or um, uh, ill-gotten gains from past um, military campaigns. And this can really give a hint as to what people, um, what their desires were, what happened in the past, um, where they're going in the future. Um, uh, if this place is a, is a, um, if this adventure that you have takes place on the open seas or, um, on a coastline or, um, an archipelago with a number of islands, then, the, then the tavern itself would have a very nautical theme to it. Um, excuse me, live and let dice says, need a political conflict info dump cut presto bar fight. And why are they fighting and bingo? And exactly. So. And, and even if the players, you know, if they don't grab onto, like, get themselves involved, insert themselves into a fight, now they're sitting here going, "Oh, they're fighting over, um, they're 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 fighting over the 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 new king is a, you know, is um a teenager, and the old king had died, and and one of them is like he was poisoned, and." There are serpers in our, our midst, and the other person is like, you can't say that about our new king, and and then maybe they start fighting, and then now the player character's are like, oh, so there's like political intrigue, all right. Um, also, you can, you can do things to use all of the senses, so they can hear conversations, um, it, using the, the sound as one of the senses, hearing conversations, um, song, um, arguments, um, anything that can impart, um, but it could be the, it could be um, pets or animals or something um, in the background. It could be um, a storm is coming and the, and the weather is changing and they're talking about that. They could be talking about crops and such, but we also have other things. It's the things that they see around them. Uh, of course, you have all the tapestries, you have the way they dress, you have their emotional context, whether they are um, nervous and sweating, whether they're happy, whether they are worried, whether they've resigned th themselves. Maybe there's an, um, uh, they know that there's an impending war and they know that although people come to the tavern from all walks of life, they may get pulled back to their home countries and they may end up becoming enemies on a battlefield and they don't want to become enemies, right? They're, they, they, you know, you've got dragonborn one place and elves another place. And then, and then there's various factions and loyalties to countries or guilds. And they know that although they are friends, their, their respective um, duties may pull them apart and they may end up finding each other on the battlefield. Um, but there's also the scent of things. So it could be that um, there's, um, there, there, it's, the food may smell bad, like it's just not, it's not rich, the, the crops just aren't really good. It could be the way things feel in this place. Everything has like a, a musk to it and it feels damp because we're, you're, you're near the water or it could be just something dry in the air. Um, any kind of thing that you wanna impart to the players, um, even if it's something simple like, um, this is a border town near a vast desert and uh, while you're sitting there eating food, a, a scorpion walks across the table and a server comes along and just like snatches the, the scorpion up and like eats a piece of it or something like that or, or throws it out the window or something. Um, RP Gamer says, even if you don't use the cliche, the characters meet in a tavern and a man approaches, that cliche is known that it's a, it's a nice place to start people who are new to the hobby. 
um, and Pru Pru um, uh, abs agrees with RP Gamer and also says, taverns, inns, and pubs seem great to me. I know there are tropes connected to them, but I don't understand the scorn some people have for them. Um, I, I think it's, I think that that scorn, that derision, that the people, why people hate them is because they're not being used as a tool. Um, it's just being used as an empty space without focus or purpose. So if I had a, an adventure and I wanted my adventurers to go on a, a ship to go across you know, a vast unknown sea and I start them in a tavern, it's imperative that I generate the, I generate the tension, the pressure it takes to push those people from the tavern to the this overseas place. Oh, an infinite role play. What's going on? Uh, you can always go on um go on the Dragonlance route. Like in an animated flick, the wizard was just kind of there chilling as the other characters kind of brought the original unifying conflict. Absolutely. And you know, um uh, I'll segue into this this other part, but you know, having that individual that's in the tavern, having the people push um or having the people being a uh, a tension generator right they know that hey guys okay here's your food here's your drink but you really got to hurry up because an enemy's coming from out of town or the weather's about to get bad or um uh, um uh, the new crops are coming in from the fields and we've got to hurry up and eat because we're all going to be needed um the ships are coming in from you know, they're, they're long haul and we're, we've all got to get back to work. Um, we're going to close up the, the tavern temporarily while everybody runs down to the docks to unload the ships quickly. It's just, it's, you want to create something that pushes people from the tavern out into your world. Um, and if it means literally directly, I'm closing my doors, you've got to get the hell out of here. Or if you don't move, the world will move you. Then you may need that kind of, um, that kind of technique. Um, RP Gamer says, I don't really understand um, either. Poo -poo, a tavern or inn has always been a meeting point between people, the shared news, and the look for help. Here's another thing, too, that um, um, in the game, that like people hate bards, but, but the bard or bardic-like individual, the storyteller, um, the person that, the, that sings songs, that collects information, was extremely important. They were like the they were considered like the town crier. This was the place where they put up a poster, a wanted poster. Um, this was a place where they're looking for people, you know, adventurers, brave and bold, and they tack something up. Um, of course, you have to have the um, the crazy old gentleman that sits in the corner that cackles to themselves. Um, um, <laughs> infinite role plays. Also, you can treat the tavern like Harlem's paradise. You know what? Um, yeah, if you've seen um, uh, Netflix, Luke Cage. Um, because I'm gonna I'm segueing into something else in the television show with Luke Cage. That tavern wasn't a tavern. That tavern was a place where people went to get their haircuts. You know, the, the the black guys in the neighborhood, man, everybody went. It was like neutral territory. You go to the tav tavern, you go to go get your haircut at the this local place, and everybody came in and it was it was neutral ground. Um, no, 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 not at all, man. Um, living like that, he says, the taverns also give a great barometer for legal taboos, trade, how the economy um, is, as well as info being socially engineered for the players. Plus, it could be a great place for relax, relaxing and having mini games. Um, okay, th that's the other part. Living like Dice brings up an excellent point. If you want to tell people, um, if you want to tell people about the social norms in this world, for example, can you walk around with weapons or not? Um, is it okay to uh, approach um, a specific gender? Um, should you wear your religious symbols out in the open or hide them? Um, can you openly um, talk about the, the political regime or should you keep that secret? Um, should you keep your money close to you because there's tons of pickpockets? Um, are there um, are there rules and regulations on magic? These, all this information you can impart and 
out of your tavern, right? When people talk, you, when the strangers walk in and um, someone ha seats them down and go, you know, gives them a look up and down and maybe the, the, the tavern owner kind of like smiles at them and says, you know, if I were you, I'd, I'd put those weapons away. You, you know, the town guard doesn't take kindly to um, to uh, blades out in the open or something of that nature. And you can impart those little bits and pieces of information. Um, absolutely. Hey, Vincent Shine, what's up? What's going on there? Um, uh, RP Gamer says, I like when they get incorporated into the adventure rather than just a place they start and then quickly move on and never see again. Um, the, the tavern is also the neutral territory. Um, <laughs> infinite role play, you're fine. Um, the, the, the tavern is a neutral territory, right? And this could be a great place for you to, to introduce your players to their possible adversaries without without starting a fight, right? So so the tavern is the place where um, the orc and half-orc tribes come and no one starts a fight. They come in for the food, they come in out of the cold. This may also be a place where um, the woodland elves that have been um, you know, s slaying the evil things that are in the woods also come. So they bring their, um, they've, you know, they've killed some owl bears and they've had their um, skins cut and, um, and uh, they have got their furs outside and they come in and then, you know, the woodland elves are looking over at the orcs and whatnot. And you can see there's a hatred, but they don't they don't draw their weapons. They don't fight. Or maybe they have they could have a little bit of wrestling matches or like throwing darts or, um, you know, arm wrestling or uh, what have you. You can have all these things, but then they never real you know, the tension is like, hmm, who leaves first? You know, and then there could be. Um, an air quote, a fight by, you know, who tips the best or what's the best meal or the best drinks. You always have to have the dwarves you, who, um, who, who can never quite get drunk, but they out drink everyone else. Um, Vincent Shine says, I personally almost never use taverns at a starting point or is, gen um, or is it generally about taverns? No, no, we're, well, uh, yes and no. What we're talking about is why, why taverns get so much hate um and what their purpose is so like we're we're just talking about um using them as um a place to impart information to the players um and using them as a starting point for the adventure i think one of the one major issue of course is if you start them in a tavern the further the tavern is away from both in time and space um in energy and resources away from where you want them to be the the more difficulty you have hurting cats to get them to where they need to go. Um, Pru Pru says, I feel like the hate for taverns some people have is just misplaced hate for bad GM craft. Uh, we've all had a GM that was lazy about their taverns. That doesn't make taverns bad or boring. Right. If you just, okay, it's the, I don't know, it's the rusty dragon and there's a wench and there's a dwarven owner um, and uh, you guys meet there. If if you don't focus in as a game master, and I, I, I yeah, it's bad GM craft. And I know you're this is this is the the chat, so you really can't describe exactly what you mean. Um, and I think it's just uh, a, maybe a slight part of um, immaturity, right? It's I'm not sure what to do. But here, but let's segue into something a little different. The tavern is just a, it's a trapping, right? It doesn't need to be a tavern. Um, um, taverns are just a, an indicative of a microcosm of, of your setting at that place in time, right? So let's, um, let's come up with a, a scenario. You have two countries that are about to go to war and there's a third element, there's a black market. So the black market needs to go across the border. And the black market is going to increase because these two countries have great tension, but the average person doesn't want the tension to explode into a war. So you use the tavern to impart that information. Here's the thing. You don't need to use a tavern, right? What you need is you need a central meeting place. The tavern just happens to be an excuse to have one. So it could be a bathhouse or um, a tea house. It could be the, the local... Um, it could be uh, the local community, what they consider a community center. 
um, if the people are far more nomadic or tribal, like the, it's like a border town, it could be just a, a circle of stones out in, you know, in the woods. It was just, hey, this is where we settled our town. Um, there's a, um, you know, there's a, a, a mill or a, uh, a fountain <laughs> or um, anything like that. It could be a central meeting place. It could be the local theater. Um, it may be um, an old, <laughs> I mentioned this yesterday, it could be old grandmother's pastry uh, place where everyone goes to pick up pastries and they happen to flow in and standing in line waiting for the pastries is um, is what they're looking for. Um, Infinite Role Play says that the, the taverns can be great. Vincent says, I personally like the idea of restaurant to another world where a restaurant has several magical doors that lead to um that lead to it and there's a great neutral ground where all kinds of weird things meet. Um, okay, and Proo Proo says, um, and that's what we're doing, um, local things like a harbor or like a horse market. It could be, um, um, it's a, a, a big tented pavilion and everyone brings their, their wares from around the place and you can buy like uh, beets one place and potatoes and fish one place and someone cooks rice and someone makes, um, oatmeal or whatever. And as you walk around, you pick up little bits and pieces of information. So it may not be that everyone's just sitting in a tavern, sitting down to drink. It could be that it is a local meeting place where people are having these different conversations and you can make it arcane, right? So maybe this place where everyone meets, like, um, it could be a, um, um, a dark alley. And everyone who everyone who knows anyone goes down this dark alley, moves, you know, you see like the old cats like and moves out the way. They move the trash aside. When you walk through, you go to this like other world. You pull the curtain aside, and it's like this great place where um you're sitting on a on a beach or something, and everyone ha happens to hang around there. You can do very arcane things. Um, um Infinite role plays. I think of a tavern like a bar or a club, but I'm saying you can, you can, it's the trappings, right? It doesn't need to be that. It could be something far more. Um, Vincent Science says the interesting thing is that most small villages, there shouldn't be a tavern, but something like a town hall or a church. Um, absolutely. This <laughs> is interjecting some setting specific stuff like DJ, DBJ is saying right now, right? So uh, if a tavern doesn't fit in your world, don't use a tavern. Um, uh, Bru Bru says Vikings used to meet in in moots um, or moats. I'm pronouncing it wrong, but where like a Viking hall, where the 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 town center. It, it's a it's a large meeting room where everyone maybe gets their tables and chairs and stuff. But when something important needs to come, all the tables are moved aside. Everyone sits down. Maybe the king or the leader, or the mayor, sits up on a podium. Um, it could be like um, a Roman amphitheater. Right where, like Socrates, you someone stands at the bottom, and everyone is sitting on um, a <laughs> sitting on um, uh, tiers of chairs or something, or level in a field, so that they can address the entire um, constabulary or whatever. Um, <laughs> Tesla says, "I feel the need for mead." Um, Town center historically was a place for congregation where all elements would be. And especially if the place was a uh, religious, maybe they're meeting under a religious symbol or maybe, um, for example, maybe it's high noon and they are worshipers of, of Apollo. And so they give a little, little speech, a, a little, you know, not everybody's very religious. So they give a little fanfare like, Oh, thanks Apollo, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Let's get to the important stuff. And then they start talking about, you know, backstabbing people and, and what was the, what was the haul in from the ships and what came in from another land. And Oh, those are those strangers. Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. yeah. Infinite role places. Yeah. You, um, got you Vince taverns and may, may not always make sense. So especially in like a medieval type setting, it may it doesn't necessarily have to be a place where people eat and drink and have conflict for example maybe your and i'm using the trappings tavern isn't a tavern at all it is a fight club it's a small um i i cannot emphasize to you how good the television old television show had four seasons spartacus 
right? People would get together to go to the arena to see and bet on and talk about and cheer the gladiators. That could be your tavern. The gladiators have come to town and and the 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 gladiator gladiatorial arena wasn't giant size, right? It was just like a fight club, just a sandy pit where people used to fight. And maybe in another town, they have the big giant sized gladiatorial arena. But here in your world, it's just a small pit fight. Everybody comes. Maybe you're more physically endowed player um PCs can fight in the in the gladiatorial pit, you know, wrestling and stuff, while the ones who want to talk and, and make deals are sitting in the in the background. Um Vincent Shine, Vincent Shine says it's just weird that in most fantasy settings, every little settlement automatically has a tavern, even if the barkeeper would would never make a profit, it isn't just a major trading post near um nearby. And you can also create an idea of um an excuse of well, why in the world would they even have a tavern in the first place? Um, let me see if I can pronounce it, <laughs> Vladimira. Yeah, um, yeah. So, but you can use a um, not just a um, a gladiatorial arena, um, not just a religious location like a like a church or whatever. Um, it could be uh, something nostalgic, right? So maybe there is a um. Down by the beach, there's a place where, like a grotto, and everyone goes to the grotto to uh, to smoke weed as the uh, the warm ocean waters roll in, and maybe it's a Polynesian um, culture, and everyone goes down to the to the grotto. They go into the grotto to to uh, soak their feet or their waist in the nice warm waters, and they go there to you know smoke weed and exchange stories. It could be that there's um. So a long time ago, children built a tree house and this tree house has started to grow. And from there, people just go over to this giant size world tree and they go up inside the tree. And then that's where they have they, they talk about such um, uh, infinite role places. Uh, Vincent, I had a tavern like that in a campaign. Um, there really was no reason to have it. It didn't make any money, <laughs> but um, the tavern owners were trying to cut their losses and leave um, a tavern in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I'm sorry, Vladimir says, a tavern in the middle of nowhere or in a super sleepy hamlet that sees no visitors? Sounds like a perfect bandit hideout or cover-up. Um, Vincent Shine says, I think you should go completely away from the tavern concept or embrace it fully and make something like a chain of taverns all owned by one super rich guy, um, which are massive and interesting. <laughs> right. Now you, now, you can absolutely go away from the tavern idea if you use it as a method of pushing the story. So for example, it's not a tavern at all. It's wagons and a gypsy, um, gypsy culture. And they move around from village to village and they just have, a, you know, maybe five wagons. Um, they read your palms. Uh, I'm being extremely um, stereotypical here, right? <laughs> um, but they, they, they drive their horses and they, um, they move their wagons from town to town. And when they show up, they have Maybe uh, jugglers, they read your palm, they predict the future. Um, maybe they bring some form of um, uh, spices or um, love potions or something. And they also impart information. They, they sell the information from one place to another. Uh, maybe there are, um, uh, to be, let's, let's get a little uh, darker. Maybe there is a... Um, uh, periodically, a group of slavers comes through, and the slavers always come through town, and the the people either buy or sell the slaves, or maybe the village doesn't even like the slavers, but the slavers always stop in town. Um, they always stop on the outskirts. Maybe they, they are uh, bounty hunters that always capture criminals, or these are slaves that are being taken to the, the, the larger... Um, evil empire and so whenever they stop that's when the people gather around and they start to talk um maybe it's um uh, a wintry area and then they go hunting you know hunting for seals or um uh, sea lions or something and whenever the hunters come back into town 
everyone gets together because they know they have maybe there's crabbing or shrimping or something. And when they gather together, that's where the information is imparted. People, you know, um, skin the fish and all that kind of stuff. Um, infinite, says, uh, infinite role play says, okay, how about framing it this way? Oh, it's going a little too fast. Um, um, Vladimir says, uh, the most notable event happened was the Druid, was a super special archetype, was based around metal, metal uh, consuming spider <laughs> in the cargo deck. At the bottom, you guys are going into, way off into a, a different uh, subject, which is, which is awesome. The idea is that you don't need to call it a tavern if it is not a tavern. Um, you need to, not need to, the idea is to make a microcosm of the local setting to impart knowledge and imparting that knowledge could be, um, it could be a crypt. Um, maybe there is um, uh, a shrine to ancients and people periodically come by the crypt to leave um, little bits and pieces of, um, of uh, flowers or um, honor, honor to the heroes that have fallen in their world. And so when they do that, um, when they leave those uh, bits and pieces, maybe they talk about um, the war that was lost and they wish their heroes could come back. Or maybe someone else um, wants to be blessed by the heroes because this new war is coming um, in opposition to this other country. And they really don't wanna fight their friends on the, uh, on the other side of the border. Um, it could be anything. So. Really, it's not about making taverns, just making taverns special, which you should, but it is about using it to impart knowledge and tension and move the story forward. So lastly, I'm just going to say that um, having a central meeting place should be used to push the action forward. Um, uh, Pru Pru says, good point, DBJ. Tavern is um, as a way more open concept. I like it and now use it. Yeah, um, um, <laughs> it's, it's about when the players get to the tavern, what do they do next? And they're not always going to latch on to the hooks. So when you put, and uh, yes, I'm saying using the word tavern. What I'm saying is when you have them interact in your setting that imparts information, if they don't take action, there should be something that pushes them forward. So if they, let's say the people, the player characters get to the tavern and all they want to do is just drink and be merry, maybe the city guard comes by. Um, maybe there is a winter storm that is going to come in and and uh, and block off the, the, the mountain pass. And if they don't get out through the mountain pass soon, they're going to be stuck in this boring little town. Um, it could be that the dwarves have um, completed their mining for the season. And so they need to get all of the uh, the ore down from the mountain pass and um, have it smelted and then taken out to uh, other places. And they really need um, the, the gold and silver and iron and tin and copper um, <laughs> to be taken out to um, the rest of the people. Sorry, I'm laughing because I'm, I'm half talking, half reading what's going on in the chat. And there's this <laughs> Vladimir is just going on this long tavern story, um, which which I hope the chats. I think the chat sticks around after the video is done. So <laughs> go back over it if anyone watches the video and um, and check that out. But anyway, um, having something that moves or motivates the players, whether it's money whether it's a threat of violence, whether it is um, the hint of magic, whether it is something that pulls on one of the players' um, heartstrings, right? So not only can the tavern be a place, it should be, it should also be something personal. So they may meet a known colleague. They may meet someone that is from their faction. They may meet someone that they've never met before, but they are of the same religion. Um, it could be an old soldier from their um, their old squad. It, it could be um, an arcane caster who has studied at the same wizard's college. Um, uh, uh, Infinite Roleplay says, yeah, the chat hangs for a while as long as you don't refresh the page. Okay. All right, cool. Because um, I actually wondered, because uh, at some point I may end up getting in the habit of snatching some of the comments out or maybe even questions 
and then using them as fuel for for other stuff. So yeah, uh, Vincent Shine says if you want to make taverns more interesting, let the barkeep give out quests. He needs cool, you know, cool new heads to hang around or something. Um, like this can even change the place, right? So if the more personal you make it, the better it could be. And it doesn't necessarily need to be a place where everybody just gets together and gets drunk. Like I said, it could be a tea house. Um, it could be a Shaolin temple. It could be um, uh, a place where warriors gather and practice their their sword art with like wooden or padded weapons. Um, it, excuse me. Um, oh, Brian Davison just figured out that I couldn't see this chat on my phone. <laughs> Good morning. Um, yeah, so... The, the idea is is to create a meeting place and the reason for the meeting place is to impart knowledge so if the players let's say you have a nautical theme um they show up off their ship they arrive um, off the ship and maybe the place isn't a tavern at all it's where they have to um it's where they meet to pay their taxes and have their goods unloaded and so there's the um the dock master and so everyone's waiting in line to talk to the dock master and it's just annoying. Uh, they have to talk to the dock master. Everyone knows that, the, you know, the taxes are great and the dock master's taking his time. So while everyone's standing in line, that's when people start talking about what's going on, what came in on a ship. And there was a ship that was lost at sea. And someone's like, no, there it is on the horizon. And someone looks out on the horizon and goes, the, the banners are flying, but I don't see anybody on it. And it looks like a ghost ship or something. And then here we go. No one's drinking. No one's sitting around. Everyone's just waiting in line as the dock master goes over paperwork or something. And this is the location where everyone talks. Um, maybe everyone is sitting outside of the the, the old grandmarm that makes the uh, pastries and everyone's standing in line and waiting for her to open up first thing in the morning and the sun is just about to crest over the hill and it's it's the crack of dawn kind of like the crack of dawn that started his live stream and everyone's waiting in line their mouth is salivating for these uh, tasty pastries and this is where they start talking and that's where the information is imparted so yeah um Taverns don't need to be taverns. Taverns are just a way for you. It's a tool for the game master or the dungeon master to impart knowledge to everyone else. Um, it is a way for you to express the, the social norms in your in your world, the the, the legalities, um, what's normal and what's not, what what people are hated, what people are loved, what the religions are, um, what are the rules for carrying weapons and using magic, and which species or genders or cultures are um, given respect or hated in this world. Maybe people don't like dragonborn, so you hear something about that. Maybe people don't, you know, don't like dwarves or something, or whatever, happening in your world. Or the, the people who worship the snake goddess um, are very prominent here or something. Um, RP gamers is a group of people gathering together to role play, a group of people gathering together. <laughs> it could be a role playing group of uh, of uh, goblins, <laughs> goblinoids that want to have other players get together. You know, it doesn't have to be a tavern. They could be getting together playing um, chess or something in the park. Um, in um, central Philadelphia, there's a there's Love Park. There's a statue in the middle with the classic um, stacked L-O-V-E with the O tilted to the side. And there are these stone tables where everyone brings their chess pieces. And um, out on these tables, the homeless play chess with the businessmen on lunch break. And the homeless people earn money playing and beating the businessmen in chess. And people gather together around while they are playing chess. Gambling would be a great place. Um, throwing dice, playing cards, um, and other methods of gambling. It could be uh, a Viking culture. They could be challenging each other on, you know, um, throwing axes into trees or um, uh, knife throwing, um, archery. It could be wrestling. Um, it could be any number of things. It could be, um, uh, elders imparting knowledge to either children or people about herbalism or something. Um, but anyway, I've been going on and on, coming up with ideas. Um, there's a ton of ideas in the in the chat. I'm uh, let me say that I'm 
surprised, but a little in um, a little taken aback that um, uh, so many of you have uh, have decided to join me. Um, thank you very much. Um, there is a Discord channel that um, that uh, Jared has opened up. And I really appreciate it. So uh, there's not much activity on it, but I would encourage you that if you want to continue to talk about these ideas to join the Discord channel, um, all that's listed below. Um, I'm a um, contributing writer to Critical Hit Publishing. Um, check us out on uh, Facebook. Join us on Facebook or uh, uh, check us out on uh, Drive Through RPG. All of our products, uh, PDFs and um, and um, print-on-demand items. Our fourth book was released, Grasslands and Plains and Grasslands, taking a boring area and taking a book and just filling with filling it with as much information as you can. Um, Brian Davis says, what is the channel name? The link isn't working for me. Really? Hmm. Okay, so I will refresh everything. Um, uh, in terms of um, the the links and that kind of thing, I wasn't aware that it wasn't working because I was basically like cut and pasting it. So I'll I'll yeah I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. I I don't want to do that now because I don't want to disrupt the um um d disrupt the video or anything like that because I always know that that that, that shit goes wrong. Um, anyway, so here's what's gonna happen. I'll um I'll refresh everything. Let me see if I can let's see if I can snatch something. Uh, boop, 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 and paste it up here. Um, <laughs> let me see. Let's go to. Let's see if I can snatch the um, Facebook group. No, no, no. It's not working for me. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not working for me. Um, call. call boop, 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 boop. Uh, shoot. All right, let's see. Boom, boom, boom. Let's do, 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 do. let's try a link like this. Let's try a link like this. Um, where is the Discord? Uh, mm, damn it! And it's long. I don't know. Uh, let's, it may not, it may not work, but I uh, will try it. We'll see. Will it pop in there? <laughs> you know, you're fine. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, completely derailed. I'm just like, hmm, I'm in my own world. Anyway. All right. So, <laughs> um, so anyway, okay. Critical hit publishing Facebook group. That's, that's going to be listed below the discord channel listed below. Um, uh, everything on drive through RPG listed below. <laughs> um, everything that um, that I talk about our, our eighth release is about the cinematic environs, which is my ba brain, brain, brainchild. Okay, everyone else who's in here, this is where I go into my commercial. So if you need to bow out or anything, you're perfectly fine. This is just a little bit of a talk about what I do and a little bit of self promotion. Um, um, Anyway, uh, yeah, RP Gamer, I'll, hey, man, have a good one, man. Um, keep the ramblings up, dude. Um, oh, RP Gamer has a channel. Go, go find RP Gamer on YouTube. I haven't, I haven't mentioned that in a while, and I apologize for that. Um, um, always, always brings me, um, always peace gives me, gives me joy. Okay, all right. Anyway, so here's the deal. Um, I'm a self-appointed third pillarist. I have uh, appointed myself to be a third pillarist. And so by appointing myself, I have crowned myself um, uh, king of all things third pillar. And by doing so, because the first pillar is combat, second pillar is social interaction, that I find that the third pillar is hardly ever used. It is. It needs to be used and abused. And that's, that's my great love in role-playing games. So... Third Pillar Thursdays are my way of talking about it. So join me on Third Pillar Thursday where we talk about all things Third Pillar. It's using the environment, that exploration. It is it is a tool that is highly underutilized. And it is your one of your best tools you can put in your DM and GM toolbox, your storyteller toolbox. Don't miss it. And so the books that I write, 
um, with Alex and Rob at Critical Hit Publishing. Um, the cinematic, it, cinematic environs deal with nothing but that. Let me give you an example. First book, um, Arctic, um, Arctic Lands. We talk about everything, not just cold, not just the ice and snow or blizzards or everything. We talk about frostbite. For example, can you, if you have a somatic spell, can you cast a spell with frostbite? We have details in there. We have some game mechanics. Can you drink a frozen potion? I don't know. In your setting, you have to decide that. We talk about that. We talk about the fact that um, if you are in a, um, in a burning forest, can you verbalize if you are choking on smoke? We have tools for that. We have mechanics. We have mechanics for for um, climbing and swimming and jumping and and drowning and all those kind of things. Um, Vincent Shine. Let's see. Still can't use it. Only direct, uh, the direct link is not valid for me. And if I click, it only get to def default Discord page. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure why you're getting that. Um, hmm. Let me try this one more time. Um, anyway, so guys, you guys have a good one. I'm 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 still gonna stay here because I know it's just like, what the hell is he doing? Um, I'm gonna try to pick up the um maybe the shortened link will let you get into it or whatnot. Um I don't know. I'm not really certain why that is. Um but Let's see. Let's get. Let's see if this will help out. I'm not sure whether it's it's because. Let's see here. Boom. Snatch. Copy. Do 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 do. do. Let's see if this works. Hmm. I don't know if that's going to work for you guys. Oh, anyway. Um. So doing these kind of things, um, do, doing this live chat really is my way of uh, just giving back to you guys because um, I don't get to game very much and my job, I work six days a week. I never know when I'm getting off I with, with, with uh, time zones and agreeing to meet with people and that kind of, it's just very difficult. So um, it's very difficult for me to, to play in games. So this is my way of giving back. So join me tomorrow. Um, also, um, one last thing that we are releasing um, on the D6 and the D20, because we're critical hit, so you got to do it on the D20. On day 20 uh, coming up, we will release yet our second adventure key. And of course, classic, the D6 on day six, we will also release um, an adventure key. So on um, on the six and 20s, we will release an adventure key, which is a like three or four page adventure um, where each portion of that adventure has um, an option in it. So we have optional... Um, optional NPCs, locations, threats, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, Brian Davis says, I feel you, man. Glad to have joined you today. No problem. Thanks, guys. Um, this is kind of like my coffee <laughs> in the morning. So anyway, I like to ramble a lot. I really apologize, guys. Everyone have a very good one. Da Brian Davidson, thanks for, for showing up. Um, Vincent Shine, thanks a lot as well. I'm sorry it w I'm, you had to go through so much trouble, but absolutely. Lastly, Talk to me. If you have a question, you want a subject, you want, you're like, dude, hey, next Monday, can you talk about <laughs> coffee? Yeah. You you have a question. Um, guys, do me a favor. Infinite role play. Go sub, go subscribe. This man is a creative engine. No, 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 no. Creative nuclear powerhouse. Um, I don't know how the hell. You were able to do live streams and do artwork just off the top of your head. What the hell? That, that shit is crazy. I love it. Um, infinite role play. Go over and um and um and shit, my brain just just uh just uh collapsed on me. Um yeah, I'm radioactive. <laughs> Dude, I, I'm easily distracted as well, man. And you you know, it's 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 that idea that um that the creatives in us we 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 start to come up with something creative and not only is it the creative idea but that creative idea creates a web of other creative ideas um vincent shine i only write but i write my own rpgs i need to start an, an english channel too um okay um 
do me a favor. Anybody else who wants to, I'm, I'm not an island, right? So if you want to join me in a panel at six in the morning, I'm all down for that. It's very difficult for me to do it at another time. But if you're like, dude, I'd like to join you and just have a talk, just not just one-on-one, -on -one, but I mean like us talking and having a chat or something like that, I'm down for that too. So like RP Gamer, um, Infant Role Play, um, Vincent, if you start, I, I don't speak German, I apologize for that. Um, but if you're if you're if you are English speaking and you you want to get some um traction on your channel or something like that, yeah, it, it, hell yeah. Um, tell you what, um, uh, contact me. Yeah, absolutely. So con when I say contact me, like like um whether it's on the Discord, whether it's uh, on on one of my videos, whether you PM me, whether you uh, Facebook me or something like that. Um, I don't care about the accent. Um, and and fuck anybody else who's got a problem with it, right? We 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 are a collective. F you if you have problems. That's that's just my thing. Um, it's all love here, and that's that's all I'm going to tolerate. So um, evil and people who are, are 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 have problems with people's culture or their their um, ability to speak, whether they have a problem, their 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 sexuality, their religion, or something like that. Um, they can go sit and spin, you know, um, we're, we're all love here. So um, that being said, <laughs> DBJ, we're almost coming up on an hour. I, I do have to get to work. I do this first thing in the morning. So thanks for um, allowing me to ramble. Um, I also post to the Facebook groups, um, um, the RPG Brigade and Absolute Tabletop. Um, those especially absolute tabletop is getting really large. So it may be a little bit difficult to find me, but if you want to know the, the way that I think go to absolute tabletop or like critical hit publishing and type in third pillar three RD pillar. And you'll see the, uh, like all the stuff that I talk about in terms of using the environment and everything. Cause that's kind of like my, that's like my niche. That's like my, my specialty. Vincent shine says, can someone send me an invitation to the group? What the, why is it? Why is this a problem? Um, live and let dice is on there. Why is there? There we go. See, okay, now, now here we're doing it live. Live and let dice says, DBJ, have you done a third pillar take on illusory effects on the environment, like a pool of what appears to be just water, but instead a deadly is like deadly acid or otherworldly lights that distort the appearance of things? So a gap between two steps might be greater than it appears. It'd be interesting to hear your thoughts on something like that. So, um, yeah, I, I know Living Like Dice is probably gone by now, but my point being is that that's exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and I, it could it, I'm thinking, um, a Vincent, I'm thinking maybe it, it shouldn't, but it could be a regional thing. Um, yeah, and I'm no expert on Discord. And dude, I'm I'm a gray beard, man. I don't even know what the hell's going on myself. Um, so anyway, guys, we will settle it out. Thank you very much for being part of it. Um, always, always thank you for bringing your A game. Um, thank you for not necess for challenging, not agreeing. Like exactly like Vincent Shine was just like, I hate. Uh, taverns because they're just old and tropey and that's exactly what I'm talking about um yeah so you're you, like you said you're in a couple of American servers I don't I'm not certain um those are the I mean I literally copy and pasted the links that I'm on and it could be that I'm a member of the discord I'm not sure that let me through um so anyway guys um um, anyone that wants to be on the Discord, some people have put up their their um their their Discord links and um and that kind of thing. So anyway, guys, reach out to me. Um, I will respond to you. I read everything. Um, oh, Vladimir says I think you've just been sending a link to the channel, not not the link. Hold on, shit. Hmm. Yeah, what the hell. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, how the hell do I do that? Yeah, I'm not certain. Yeah, because um, I'm old and uh, crotchety and not very smart. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm. I'm not exactly sure what the hell's going on, and I'm not exactly sure what the what to snatch. 
if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Oh, okay, okay. Hmm. So how do I do, 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 do how do I invite? No, I don't want to do that. No. Hmm. I'm not exactly certain how to do it. There we go. Pin, pin. I don't want to mute it. Yeah, it, it's uh, Discord's new to me. I've been on it. I haven't done it. Like I don't. I'm not a. I'm not a Discord master. Um, Let me see. Okay. All right. Uh, right click on the channel, then send invites that produces a link. Okay. Um, da, 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 da. Come on. Invite people. There we go. Okay. There we go. Copy. Boom, boom, boom. Let's see if this works. Hold, where, here we go. Here we go. Paste. Let's see if that works. Uh, and I'll wait. Perfect. There we go. All right. <laughs> so, and sorry about the time lag, too, uh, guys. Thank you. very. See, now, this is what I'm talking about. Walk, walking the idiot through <laughs> through these things. Um, anyway, I'm glad I could help, Vince. Um, and it, <laughs> perfect. There we go. There we go. All right. So, all right, thank you very much uh, for, for being patient with me. That's what, there we go. There's shadow shine, Vladimir comes in, bam. All right, all right. Post up what you guys want to talk about. Uh, continue the conversation with yourselves. Um, um, if you need to call me anything, you can call me DBJ. It's 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 short for a lot of, uh, um, it's easy fodder for a lot of nasty things. I don't mind. Um, and also shoot me anything. So if you like, if you're like, hey, DBJ, blank, um, talk, can you talk about this or bring up something? For example, um, the, the Live and Let Dice was talking about illusor illusionary effects. Illusory? Yeah, it's a word, illusory. Um, I mean, it is. I'm just mispronouncing it. Anyway, um, so by the way, those are the things. You, uh, maybe this isn't the normal. <laughs> <laughs> live stream about me um me rambling on and on but you guys have a very good day i gotta get to work um thank you for joining me everybody um from from infinite role to rp gamer go ahead check out their channels as well um we've been shit we've we've been in each other's uh, circles forever um so guys have a very good day i'll talk to you guys tomorrow and any other day um Check in if you want to. Of course, I go live 6 a.m. Monday through Friday for a Demi Daily Deep Dive with DBJ.